Well, hello Scrappers, Mike here, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to the next installment of my Forbidden Chemistry series, the series of videos where I show you how to make the chemicals that you aren't allowed to buy in your country. If you don't happen to live in a country as open as, say, the U.S. here or some other countries, where you can buy pretty much anything you want out on the market. A lot of countries, a lot of chemicals are banned and not allowed to get into the hands of ordinary citizens. And uh, in previous videos, I've showed you how to make potassium nitrate using a simple process and uh, easy to acquire ingredients almost anywhere. So that went over very well. And in another previous video, I showed you how to make concentrated sulfuric acid which is something else that is getting banned in lots of places, unfortunately. A lot of nanny staters, insecure politicians and whatnot are banning it as an explosives precursor. So it's getting hard to find in a lot of places, but it's incredibly useful if you do like I do and you recover gold and silver from e-waste, you know? It's, it's, these chemicals come in really handy. And now that we've got these two chemicals, we can make another chemical that's really hard to find in a lot of places. Nitric acid. We can make concentrated nitric acid. And, you know, if you're out there trying to do, you know, gold recovery from e-waste using, like, poor man's nitric and uh, poor man's aporegia, and you want to step up your game to using the real stuff, but you're not allowed to buy it in your country or your province or whatever, I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, now, like I said in the previous videos where we made the potassium nitrate and made the concentrated sulfuric acid, you need to double check the laws in your country. I am not an expert on the laws in every country, okay? I know it's illegal to buy this stuff in a lot of places. Some places it's illegal to possess it, and you can get in trouble for simply possessing these chemicals. So make sure before... You follow in my footsteps here and, you know, make these chemicals and especially when it comes to nitric acid. This concentrated nitric acid is what we're going to make in this video. And that is banned in a lot of places. And I know actually possessing it is a crime in some places. So double check. Make sure you don't get yourself in trouble by following what I'm doing here. But if you are allowed to possess it and you just aren't allowed to buy it, well, hey, make your own. It's not that hard. I'll show you how to do it here in this video, and using nitric acid, it, it just makes everything so much easier when you're trying to extract precious metals from e-waste. It just works so much better. You don't have certain problems like you have with solubility issues with sulfates and stuff. It all goes away when you're using nitric acid. It's just a beautiful thing, and you know, you'll know you kick yourself for not doing it sooner and, and switching to using nitric acid. And my nitric acid stock's getting a little low, so I think it's time to finally get this video moving and make some nitric acid. Now, you're going to need some equipment for this. For potassium nitrate and the sulfuric acid, we use really simple equipment, okay? The, the concentrated nitric acid is a little more difficult. We're going to need some equipment. So let me show you kind of the minimum equipment that you're going to need to make concentrated nitric acid. All right, so talking about equipment now, you're going to need a distillation apparatus, at least some sort of basic distillation apparatus. Now, you could go with a retort. I'll put a photo up of a retort and a link to one in the description of this video if you're interested in going that way. It's a little simpler, but it doesn't work quite as well. Or you can go with a distillation apparatus like I've got here. Now, don't be afraid of this. It's not as complicated or as expensive as you might think. And um, you can get a basic distillation apparatus that has everything you need, a boiling flask, a thermometer adapter, um, a, a, a condenser, a down arm and a receiving flask. You can get all that relatively cheap. It'll even come with Keck clips 
which hold the ground glass joints together so they don't come apart. Um, it can come with hoses to feed water to the condenser. You might have to buy a pump. A lot of the kits don't come with a pump, uh, but you could feed tap water through it. I'm going to feed ice water through it because that works much better. I'm going to use a little 12-volt pump for that. We'll get more into the minutia of how I'm going to set this thing up because I can't leave it leaning against uh, a water jug while we're doing this. It's going to have to be, you know, attached to like a ring stand and lab jacks and stuff. But again, you don't be afraid of all that and don't think you have to go all haul whole hog right off and uh, purchase all that specialty laboratory equipment. You can get started with the basic kit and make yourself a few hundred milliliters of nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid with no trouble. That's where I started out way back when with the most basic equipment. And you don't need like a lab ring stand and clamps and stuff. You can bodge together something out of wood. I wouldn't recommend plastic because of the temperatures at which this is going to be operating at. But you can bodge together something out of wood and make it work. Okay. Again, we'll get more into the minutia of how I'm going to set this up as I do so. Now, your, your basic kit is going to come with like maybe a one liter boiling flask, single neck boiling flask, and maybe a half liter um, receiving flask. Now, I've, I've upped my game a little bit. I've bought, you know, a bigger two liter boiling flask with double neck ones so I can add more reactants to it and keep the process going. Um, and I have a variety of receiving flasks. So, you know, this, the sky's the limit on what you can do with this, but don't feel like you've got to go whole hog right off. Maybe get a basic kit inexpensively, learn how, learn the process, learn how to do it, and then, you know, work your way up to something bigger if you need nitric acid in large quantities. So aside from your distillation apparatus over here, you're going to need a heat source. We're going to use a hot plate, an electric hot plate here. You can use um, a gas burner. That's fine. Um, this is going to have to be done outside. Don't think you can do this in your kitchen on the stove. The fumes that are going to be produced by this are nasty. And you don't want to be breathing them. You don't want them in your house. So this is going to have to be done outside. So on a portable hot plate of some sort. Um, you're going to need some safety equipment. You know, um, you're going to need like maybe a chemical apron. Um, you're going to need eye protection. And you're going to need gloves. Now normally... If you watch my videos, you see me in these blue nitro gloves. I wear these for a lot of stuff. We're not going to wear these for this process because concentrated nitric acid, especially if it's hot, does not play nice with nitro gloves. Okay? So here's a classic test. I've got a, uh, a nitrile glove here. And I'm just going to put a little of this acid on it and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, that is some concentrated nitric acid. This is why they say you should not wear gloves when working with nitric acid. Yeah, you could wind up with your hands on fire if you splash a little of it on yourself by accident. So we're going to wear vinyl gloves for this process. So I got some a, a new box of vinyl gloves here just for this process, okay? So I don't want my hands going up in flames. And you're going to need something to store your acid in once you make it. Now, you can store it in just the receiving flask, whatever it is. You know, cork it off uh, and keep it that way. But it's better to have something like, say, a brown glass or plastic bottle with a nice tight-fitting lid. Here I have a, a brown glass acid bottle with a ground glass lid. Um, that's a good place to store your, your nitric acid in because light and air will degrade it, okay? And this, this helps. I also have a lot of empty nitric acid bottles that actually held concentrated nitric acid at one point. So they're the kind of plastic that can stand up to it. Um, and I just store them in the dark, basically, with the lid screwed on tight. And that works, too. So, you know, besides, you're going to need all this stuff besides just your, your two reactants, okay? So, you know, don't even attempt this until you have all this stuff in hand. All right, so let's get started setting this up, and I'll, I'll get a little more into the intricacies of the setup as we go. So setting up all this takes a little while, so um, 
I, I'll spare you having to watch it. Uh, but I will say this about it. Um, it's a bit of an investment, but it's really worth it. Because once you have this distillation apparatus, you can do a lot with it. All right, besides just make your own, you know, high strength nitric acid, you can do a lot of other stuff with it. Um, you know, back in the last video in this series, we made uh, concentrated sulfuric acid just by boiling off the water from dilute acid. Well, with this setup, you can make much better sulfuric acid with a lot less fumes, trust me. So, yeah, this would be a good investment for that if you need to make a lot of your own concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, tons of other stuff you can do with a setup like this. You could get, uh, like, the low-strength drugstore hydrogen peroxide, and you could distill it up to much higher strength uh, without having to buy the expensive high-strength stuff. If you, if you could even find it. I know that's another thing that in a lot of places you can't get, and maybe we'll explore that in the future too. And we won't even get into the possibilities of distilling your own alcoholic spirits with this, which is another popular pastime a lot of people have. So, yeah, this is a really great investment, this distillation apparatus, the whole setup. And once I do get it all set up, I'll give you an overview of what all the pieces are and how they work and of course there will be links in the video description to where you can buy all this stuff if you want to all right so let me get back to work so we can make some acid today the hardest part of this operation is the setup and i spared you the hour it took me to get everything in place to uh make some nitric acid but it's worth it for cheap nitric acid okay so we've got our boiling flask over here it's in a corningware dish on top of a hot plate We've got our connector here for the condenser. Uh, we've got a thermometer adapter so we can see what our temperature is up here in the uh, connector. We've got our condenser. We've got our down arm. And normally I would make acid. I would put it into this brown bottle directly out of there. But just so you can see what's going on, we're going to do it in some transparent flask. Uh, the glassware is all held together with these little plastic check clips. I hope they're showing up. There's Keck clips down there. They're cheap, and they hold the pieces of glassware together at the ground glass joints. Um, also, I have uh, Teflon tape on all the ground glass joints to try and seal the glassware to keep the fumes in. And over here, I've got a hose coming off from the down arm there. And I am running that into my fume hood, and that's where the excess fumes from this process, and there will be fumes, trust me, I said you can't do this in your kitchen or indoors. Um, those are going to go into the fume hood, I'll have the fume hood running, and it will vent them out away from me. I've got tubing connected to the condenser, and it's running down here. I've got a cooler with some big blocks of ice in it and some water, and there's a submersible pump in the cooler. And it's going to pump ice water up into the condenser. It's going to come into the bottom of the condenser and out the top and then back into the cooler. So we'll have a circulation loop going. And that will help us condense the nitric acid, which is going to come off of this reaction as a vapor. So we'll need to condense it. Try not to be intimidated by all this equipment. It's First off, it's not that expensive to buy. And secondly, you don't have to go with all the laboratory-grade ring stands and clamps and lab jacks and stuff. You can bodge together whatever. I mean, here I've got bricks and blocks of wood holding up the, uh, the hot plate to where I want it. You can, you can do that all over the place here, okay? You can make some sort of stand out of wood, whatever. You don't need the fancy stuff. I just happen to have it because, well, I do a lot of scrap pickups. And, you know, a lot of the companies I pick up scrap from, they have laboratories, you know, analytical laboratories, QA labs, whatever, and they throw out a lot of lab equipment. A lot of this stuff is stuff I picked up in scrap pickups and saved for my own use. But it's really not that expensive to buy, and you don't even really, like I said, don't even really need it. You can get by with just whatever you can work up. Now, the first product to come over isn't going to be pure nitric acid because our reactants over here, which we made in previous videos, are not going to be completely dry, all right? Our acid's going to have some water in it, and our potassium nitrate, in spite of being in our homemade desiccator, is probably going to have some water crystallization in it, too. So 
when we first start making the acid, the first stuff to come over is not going to be pure acid. So I will catch that in one flask here. And then at some point, when it looks like we're getting pure stuff over, I will switch over to another flask. Now, the impure stuff is still going to be great to use. It's still going to be pretty high strength. Probably, you know, even better than the uh, azeotrope strength of uh, 69%. So it's still good acid. We're going to keep it. But uh, once it looks like we're getting really pure acid over, I will switch over to this other flask and we will catch the really pure stuff. All right. I've got one more bit of setup to do. In the past, I would use an oil bath to heat the boiling flask. That works great, but it makes a horrible mess when it comes time to clean up. Getting the oil off your glassware is very difficult. Um, so I'm going to fill this with dry sand, actually, and make a sand bath. And I found that the sand bath works pretty well, too. So let me get some dry sand in here. That was the last bit of setup. I actually forgot to do that. I planned on doing that before I started filming, but, well, I forgot. Okay, there's the sand bath in place. If you've watched my earlier videos, you know I used the oil bath, but really, man, it was hard to clean the oil off the glassware. Like, no matter how many times I scrubbed it, it still was oily feeling and stuff would stick to it. The sand works pretty good. Once it gets up to temperature, it conducts the heat up to the surface of the glass. Got to use dry sand, though. So... Okay, I think we're ready for reactants now. Okay, we are ready to measure out our reactants and get them in the boiling flask here. We've got our potassium nitrate we made in episode one of this series. We've got our concentrated sulfuric acid that we made in part two of this series. So, how much are we going to use? We're going to use 200 grams of the potassium nitrate and about 110 um, milliliters of the sulfuric acid and we're going to get them in there so let me get my scale out so i can measure out the potassium nitrate okay so we need 200 grams of our homemade potassium nitrate some of these crystals are a little big so i might have a little bit of trouble getting through the funnel i probably should have put this stuff through a blender We're going to make a fairly big batch of acid. Like I said, setting this up took the better part of an hour. So it's really not worth the effort unless you make a big batch of acid. At least not to me. If you only need a little acid, that's different. Okay. So we'll get this in the boiling flask here. Well, as I expected, these crystals are a little big, so I'm having to help them the funnel a little bit here but we'll get it all in eventually all right managed to get all the potassium nitrate crystals in there now we need to measure out our 210 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid it's a little over the 200 mark should do it all right And we can just pour this right down in here, carefully. Don't want to spill it. Okay. Set that aside. That needs to be cleaned up before I do something stupid like grab it without gloves on. Okay. So, let me move the camera and show you what's going on already. So, as soon as the uh, sulfuric acid went in there, this stuff started turning yellow. Uh, the reaction has started already. There's even some bubbling, even though everything is still stone cold right now. But uh, a little heat will fix that. So let me turn the hot plate on and get this sand bath heating up. And pretty soon we should start to see a reaction. Now, we're going to have a limited view of it because I'm going to get some aluminum foil and I'm going to sort of mummify this whole setup with aluminum foil to keep the heat in. 
because it'll work much better if we keep the heat in all the way up here to the beginning of the condenser. That way, um, stuff won't just sit in here and reflux and, you know, condense on the cooler parts of the glassware here and not make it through the condenser. So we'll keep all this glassware hot and then the fumes will make it into the condenser and they'll condense and they'll start dripping down. Speaking of the condenser, I suppose we can turn on the water flow, the condenser. There we go. It's probably a little early, although I do see some bubbling starting to happen in there. I don't really think we're going to get much in the way of anything coming over for a while. But at least we can get everything flowing. So let me go get some aluminum foil. And uh, we'll wrap this up. We'll, I'll give you a peek under the foil every once in a while and see what's going on. But eventually, we should start to see stuff condensing in the condenser and dripping in the flask over here, in the receiving flask. Yeah, there's definitely some bubbling going on in there. And like I said, everything's still cold. This hasn't had a chance to heat up yet. But it will start heating up soon. And uh, yeah, see the bubbling? I hope that's showing up. That reaction will just speed up as it heats up. So let me go get some foil. Well, this has started to heat up a little bit. Look at the bubbling going on. Let's see a temp here. It's only up to about 36, not even 40 C yet. And uh, wow, we got quite a reaction. So, so I'm going to wrap this in aluminum foil now, and that should help keep the heat in and really get the reaction ramped up. Yeah, we're starting to get some orange fumes in there. Liquid's refluxing down the sides of the glassware back into the bottom. So if I wrap it with foil, it'll keep the heat in. as best we can and get those fumes to make it into the condenser instead of just refluxing endlessly in the boiling flask and the glassware up here. So we should start seeing some stuff coming out of the other end here pretty quick. Looks like we're starting to get some condensate on the sides of the flask there, we should see the first drops of nitric acid coming over pretty soon. Got a little bit of condensation on the cold uh, condenser there that's dripping on the ground. That's not really a problem. But sooner or later, we should start seeing some nitric acid starting to come over. There we are. I got distracted, missed the first couple of drips to come across. But here we are. We're making nitric acid. And you can see the orange color of the fumes in the flask there. That's why it's going to be called red, nit red fuming nitric acid because we've got this nitrogen dioxide is being produced in here along with the nitric acid. The heat is causing some of the nitric acid to decompose. So we've got nitrogen dioxide gas as well as liquid nitric acid coming over. Now like I said this is probably not 100% strength stuff because we're still getting water out of our reactants in there. I'm going to let this go for a while, and then I will switch over to this other flask down here, and we will collect much more potent nitric acid, close to 100%. And every time I do this, every time I do this, somebody makes a stink in the comments or emails me or whatever and says, what you're doing is impossible. You cannot distill nitric acid above the 69% azeotrope. Yes, you're right. You can't distill nitric acid above the 69% azeotrope. Thing is, we're not distilling nitric acid here. We're making nitric acid. So we're making it from the reactants we put in over here. There's very little water in those reactants, and most of that's coming over in the first bit of product here. So once all that water is out of there, the next nitric acid that comes over is going to be very, very pure. I wouldn't be surprised if we're in the high 90s on percentage wise. And we can measure that later and see just how high a percentage of acid we've got. So like I said, I'll let this run for a while. Then we'll switch out beakers and collect the good stuff. Okay, we're collecting acid good. I'll give you a quick look at what's going on inside the boiling flask here. 
Look at that. Yeah, we got quite the reaction going on in there. I hope that's showing up. See that? So what's happened is the sulfuric acid has reacted with the uh, potassium nitrate in there and produced potassium bisulfate and nitric acid. The nitric acid in there is a liquid, and what we're doing is we're boiling it off as a liquid, liquid nitric acid now, and it's coming across through the condenser, condensing and dripping over here. So that's what we're doing. So I'm going to let this go for just a couple more minutes, and then I'm going to switch out the flasks. All right, I'm going to switch out the flasks. I think we're probably getting pretty pure stuff over by now. Let me see if I can do this between drops. Probably not. I will probably spill some. No, I think I got it. What do you know about that? I think I got it. There we go. So this is going to be our somewhat watery nitric acid. I imagine probably not much stronger than the 68% azeotrope. And hopefully what we're going to be getting from now on is going to be some much more potent stuff. So we'll just let this run and see how much we get. So here's a look at the thermometer coming out of the top of the glassware. Now, pure nitric acid boils at 83C, so we're running a little higher than that. But the liquid is coming over fast, so... I'm not going to mess with anything. We're running a little hot, but we're running good. Been running for maybe an hour. Liquid's still coming across. know when the reaction is done I can hear some of you asking out there in YouTube land well of course the dripping will slow way down that will be a good indication but also the temperature on the thermometer up here will start climbing well above where we are now as we boil off the bulk of the nitric acid in the boiling flask there uh, because right now it can't climb much higher because the acid is boiling out and taking the heat with it. But once we run out of acid, the interior of the boiling flask will start heating up more. And that extra heat will start turning what acid's left in there into nitrogen dioxide. So we'll start getting significantly more of the orange fumes coming over. It will get dark orange, pretty much opaque even, as we get near the end. So that's going to be my indications that the process is coming to a close. Right now, everything's just running like clockwork, so I'm not touching it. We're just going to let it run and collect the good stuff here. Yeah, the temperature in the boiling flask is creeping up, so we've probably boiled off a good part of the nitric acid in there. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit continue boiling what's in there but I don't want to I don't want to overheat it too much and turn it all into nitrogen dioxide so I'll try and bring the temperature down a little bit and keep the distillation going until we get as much acid as possible well turning down the heat has significantly slowed the rate that the acids dripping over it sort of comes through you know in batches of drops now rather than constant but uh, I think in the long run I'll get more acid this way rather than really blow torching the stuff in the uh, boiling flask there and trying to boil off every last little bit of the acid because the excess heat will just convert it into nitrogen dioxide gas which will go through this hose and out my fume hood uselessly so yes in the long run I think by turning the heat down, I am going to get more acid. It's just going to come over slower. But that's okay. I'm working on stuff in the background. Well, this is making acid for me. It's pretty hands-off. Well, we are close to two hours in, and I would say we are about done. The drips are coming pretty infrequently. 
and we're getting a whole lot of orange fumes coming over. Let me unwrap this and show you what it looks like inside. Yeah, we're making a lot of orange fumes. We still got acid refluxing on the inside of the boiling flask and up here, dripping off the bottom of the thermometer and all, but uh, really, the temperature inside has climbed above uh, 120 C, so what we're really doing here is we're decomposing the nitric acid. So I'm going to turn the heat off. So we're done, right? This is it. We got what? Maybe 100 milliliters of concentrated acid and maybe, I don't know, 10 milliliters of more dilute acid over here. You're thinking, that's not very much acid for the setup, but we're not done. One reason I use such a large boiling flask, a two liter boiling flask, is that there's room in here for me to add more reactants. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit because if I put more stuff in there right now, it's gonna, it's gonna violently react because it's hot. But I'm gonna let it cool down. And when it does cool down, I'm gonna put the rest of our potassium nitrate in there and we're gonna distill us some more nitric acid. Since I've got this whole setup assembled, and going you know it's not worth it unless i make a fair amount of acid so i can actually get um two three four batches through here and produce a significant amount of nitric acid now i don't have that much more potassium nitrate a lot of times i use sodium nitrate for this if you can get a hold of sodium nitrate it works really well for this too um but uh yeah once this cools down we're going to make a little more acid. Same process as before. I'll put the reactants in. I'll catch the first stuff to come over because it'll be a little wet. And then we'll swap out the flasks and catch the good stuff again. So we take a little break, have a little lunch while I'm waiting for the setup to cool down, and then we'll do that. Okay, I had a nice leisurely lunch. This has had a chance to cool down a lot. And I needed it to cool down before I put any more potassium nitrate in there. I used a, a big excess of sulfuric acid in here. So the amount of sulfuric acid I put in here should have been able to handle about double the amount of potassium nitrate I put in. So I should be able to process the rest of this without putting any more acid in. But I didn't want to put it in while it was hot because it would immediately flash into nitric acid when it hit the hot sulfuric acid in there. And that would have been bad. So we'll get the rest of this in. And we'll turn the heat back on and get this cooking again and make ourselves some more nitric acid. Now I do have the, uh, the flask with the dilute stuff put back on here. And we'll catch the first little bit coming over again because it will probably be somewhat dilute. All right, I got all of the rest of the potassium nitrate in there. It's starting to heat up again. So we should be starting to produce some more nitric acid pretty soon. I will get the foil back on it to keep the heat in. And we'll keep the good times rolling here. First drops and the second batch of acid are coming through. So I'll do like I did before. I'll just let this run for a little while and then I'll swap out the flasks. Uh, this first stuff comes through probably has a little bit of water in it. Maybe not too much because I only put um, more potassium nitrate in the boiling flask. And I think most of our water was probably in our homemade sulfuric acid, which didn't get quite as strong as I was hoping. We've probably boiled most of the water out of that, but I will let this go for a little while anyway, and then swap them out again, just like before. Ah, got it again without losing a single drop. Lucky today, I should go buy some lottery tickets.
so we'll just let her run again. Oh yeah, it's really coming through. Good, good. Making some acid now. Well, things are starting to slow down again. I'm gonna let it run a little while longer before I call it, because we are still getting, you know, a fair amount of liquid coming over. It's just coming over in spurts, with uh, lulls between spurts, but it is coming over. But once it slows down appreciably more, I will uh, shut everything down, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go on from there. All right, so I've shut everything down, and here's our nitric acid. Here's our concentrated acid over here, and here's our weaker stuff that was the first stuff to come across. And I'm pretty happy with the amount we got here. I imagine it's probably, it's hard to tell because this one's not graduated, and it's a little bigger than this one. So I would say we're probably close to 200 milliliters of liquid here, which um, is, is close to a pretty good yield. All right, let's figure out how strong our acid is. Okay, so this is the potent stuff. So this should be about as potent as we get. So I've got exactly 10 milliliters of it in this graduated cylinder. So we'll measure the weight of the cylinder. I don't know how strong this acid is yet, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> I spilled a couple drops of it up here right above where my phone is. And, well, it's it's bubbled the paint up pretty good on my on my bench. So let's see. 22.74 grams is what the scale reads, okay? And I know how heavy my graduated cylinder is. So let me put in 22. Now we're up to 7.6. 22.76 minus the 8.21 of the weight of the cylinder. 8.21. Okay, that gives us 14.55 grams. Divide that by 10 because we got 10 milliliters in here. And that gives us 1.455 is the density of our acid in grams per milliliter. Okay, so I've got this handy dandy chart here, which I got off the internet, which has. Um, the, the concentration of the acid versus density. So if we know our density and we know the temperature, we got to know the temperature. How much? What's the weight of our? What's the temperature of our acid? 21, 21C. All right. So here's the 20C line. So we'll go with it. So we are at 20C and we are at 1.455 for our density. So we are right up here between. 1.4486 and 1.4521. So we are between 80 and 81 percent. We'll call it 80 and a half percent on our on our concentration. That is pretty darn good. So that's fantastic. We are comfortably above the 68 percent azeotrope. Um, that you, when you buy nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid, that's typically what you get unless you pay a whole lot extra for the anhydrous stuff. And, hey, if you can't get nitric acid at all where you live and you have to make your own, 80 to 81 percent, that's pretty darn good, I'm thinking. So, you know, but our, our, our homemade acid that we made back in the last video, that had a little bit more water in it than the commercial acid I've been buying. So, um, yeah, we're, we're not quite up into the 90s like I would normally get with my acid production. But, you know, like I said, the sulfuric acid had some extra water, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was still some water of crystallization left in our potassium nitrate, even though it went through our um, homemade desiccator. So, yeah, this is just going to be a slightly wetter acid than I normally make with this process, but... Hey, 80 percent's not bad. I really don't need acid up in the 90s strength. I can get by with the azeotrope. So this stuff is, you know, 
comfortably stronger than that. So I'm pretty happy. All right, let's test the weaker stuff and see what it is. Okay, this time I've got 10 millimeters of the weaker stuff in here. And we are reading 22.61 on the weight. So 22.61 minus 8.21 equals 1.44 divided by 10 equals, yeah. So we are at 1.44, which on our handy dandy chart here at 20 degrees, that puts us at about 77%. Hey, that is not bad for the weaker fraction. Um, so it's not as weak as I thought. So I could probably just combine those and um, get a, a total volume of acid we created and uh, figure out our yield then. Or can I figure out a yield? I forgot to weigh the second batch of potassium nitrate I put in the uh, boiling flush, didn't I? Oh, yeah, that's coming back to haunt me now. I have to give that some thought. Maybe we can calculate a yield based on the amount of sulfuric acid we used. Okay, so let me give that some thought. All right, we know the strength now of our two acids here, the, the stuff that came over first and the stuff that came over later. The question is, how much acid did we make all together? And can we calculate a yield? Calculating a yield, I think, is going to be tough. But let's figure out how much we've got. I think I said, I think I said earlier, I don't need super strong acid. I mean, I'm not making high explosives here. I'm not making hypergolic rocket propellant or anything else you need, you know, close to 100% nitric acid for. You know, I'm refining gold. So even the azeotrope at 68% would be plenty strong for what I'm doing. So this stuff is well above azeotrope strength. So it's, it's, it's plenty strong. So I'm just going to combine these, um, and we'll figure that the strength is going to be somewhere in between the two. And I'm going to pour them into this flask here because this one is graduated. Maybe not the most accurate measure. but at least it does have some graduations on it. So we can see just how much acid we've got here. So it looks like probably about somewhere between 160, 170 milliliters of fairly concentrated red fuming nitric acid there. Although it's really only yellow orange, not really red. But uh, yeah, so... Eh, we'll call it 170. Looks like it's probably that high. All right, so let's think about this. Well, if setup is a chore, cleanup is a bore, but it's it, it must be done. But first off, I'll tell you what I did. Since I had everything set up, I didn't stop with the 170 milliliters of acid that I created on camera. I kept going and kept going because, you know, it is a chore to set up and it is a chore to take down and clean up. So... I got that, and I've also got all this. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but the level in my brown acid bottle is up to about here. It's roughly the same strength. Um, I had some sodium nitrate, so I used that and some more of our homemade uh, sulfuric acid, and I made quite a bit more nitric acid. So I would say all together, I've easily got half a liter of... Uh, homegrown nitric acid over here. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good amount of acid for the effort of setting up and tearing down all this stuff. So let me get my precious acid out of harm's way here. 
so we can start the cleanup process. So what I've got here is a little tub of water. I put a whole lot of baking soda in it to neutralize the acid. And everything goes in the tub of water here. And yeah, it's all going to fizz. Yep. It's all going to fizz when that acid meets the baking soda. Yep. So I'm just going to take this part. Every little piece goes into... The water bath gets the acid neutralized. Oh, doesn't that fizz and foam? Wow. Yeah. Uh, every time I make nitric acid, I ruin a tech, tech clip or two. Uh, in spite of my best efforts, the uh, the gases do leak out of the joints. You have to be careful because these joints still have a lot of acid in the low spots. So be careful when you take it apart. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fizzing right there. Yeah, be careful when you take it apart because there's still acid in those low spots and you can splash it around. You don't want to get it in your eyes. You don't want to get it on your skin where you don't have your gloves on. Your hands are tough. They can handle um, being exposed to concentrated nitric acid briefly. But other parts of your skin, not so much. You get it on the skin of your arms, on your face, it'll hurt. You certainly don't want to get it in your eyes. So be careful. So I'm going to let uh, this thing cool down some more. Uh, because it's it's wicked hot still. It takes forever with the sand bath to cool down. Once it does cool down, um, I will actually pour quite a bit of this uh, baking soda water in there. And it's going to fizz. Let me tell you, it's going to fizz. But it will, over time, dissolve that plug of uh, more or less solid uh, sodium potassium sulfate out of there. So, and then I can just pour it out of the uh, out of the flask once it's all dissolved. So, I'll get this stuff cleaned up, and then uh, get it all back on the uh, on the drying rack, and then. Uh, Maybe by then this will be cool enough to pour some of the water in and uh, start dissolving that sluggish stuff in there. So anyway, that's how you make your own nitric acid if you're not allowed to buy it. And, you know, if you can't buy sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate, I showed you how to make that. If you can't buy concentrated sulfuric acid, I showed you how to make that. So you can make your own concentrated nitric acid. Stick it to the man. Tell him, sir, no, sir, I'm going to make my own acid whether you want me to have it or not. All right. So I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. If so, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next video. This may not be the last of the Forbidden Chemistry videos. There may be others. So subscribe. Subscribe to see those future videos. Check out my two other channels, Electric Geek 64 and Mike's Lapidary and Fossils. There's good stuff going on there, too. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye. Look at that. I poured quite a bit of my baking soda water into the boiling flask. It is slowly dissolving the big slug of sodium and potassium sulfate down there. You can't really even see it. There's so many bubbles going on in there, and it's bubbling out the top. But, uh, yeah, give it a couple hours, and uh, everything will be, all the solids will be dissolved in there, and I'll be able to dump it out and clean out the flask. Easy peasy. All right, see you next time. Bye.